it's a Saturday, it's a bank holiday, it's half term. So all three of them are going out, which is good because it might start paying some of the bills on them. So we're just going to put some stickers on the front of two of them because two of them haven't got the stickers on the front to say the names of them so that we can tell them apart. So I've got the Merlot. Mini Merlot over there with a the basket on, ready to do that. You suffer all sorts of jobs. This is the field of wheat now where we tried the weed wiper thing. So we went down that side there. We obviously took a little bit out because you can see the odd brown patch. But we didn't take enough off and then now there's a load more come through as well. This was potatoes last year, so I think the deep blueston has brought this ryegrass up because it's something we've not really seen in this field before. So hopefully we, we can put it into rate next year and uh, get on top of it because it's, it's a bit embarrassing really. Well, the wheat looks okay to be fair. What do they say anyway? Uh, turnover is vanity, profit is sanity. Well, it's a little bit like that sometimes with growing corn. You, know, you, can, you can spend a lot on it and it can look amazing. But at the end of the day, you know, we need a profit. If we don't make a profit each year, or at least break even, then we can't carry on. So we're just gonna have to put up tufts of grass this year. Anyway, it made the straw worth a bit more, I suppose. A bit of a, a bit of fodder in it. Warmed up a bit, so I'm down to just me one t-shirt now. I had two on this morning because it's a bit chilly. Got chicken oil though. It's gonna uh, we're gonna load it up tonight actually and take it up to Charlotte's dad's to pick me a uh, jury picker up. Joe's needs it next week for taking the grain dryer apart and the Merlot's basically done my problem so. What I'll probably do is when I get the time I'll put like a compliment compliment together of of all the different things that we've done to it. I know I did like a little one in the week but now it's finished we'll put it all together so it'll be like one long sort of a video of everything that we have to do to it to, to make it from a bottle like a scrapper to a, a service on one machine. Right, I'm going to embarrass Adam now. Can you see that triangle going up there and down there and then down to here? Well, it's a short tram line, like a little, what we call a tom shark. And when he put the fertiliser on the other week, he missed it out. So the corn's quite short and it peaky. So uh, it just shows you how well the fertiliser works. We could call it a trial plot, pretend that we, just, we wanted to do it, and then when we come in the combine, we'll map it and see whether it made any difference, but it's not really big enough. So, it's just a miss. This is a six metre strip between two fields of wheat, a little path running down the middle. We sow it with different wildflowers. Anyway, some of them have actually started to grow from last year already. They're like annuals, or perennials, whatever you call it. We, we've now scattered more seed onto here. Yeah. We couldn't drill it because the drill's now too wide and we didn't do it with the other drill because it was too wet. But hopefully, they're all little tiny seeds, hopefully they'll start to grow after because they basically got a little bit of rain as well. Some of the ones from last year will actually start to grow as well. It's nice to see it encourages pollinators on and then they obviously eat the aphids as well. So we'll come back to this in a month or so and see what it looks like, but it basically goes all the way around this sort of like 20 acre block, 30 acre block, block of ground, right up to up there top of that hill is where the NHS bit is as well. Just so you know, that's all the, mostly the metal that came out of the concrete we crushed. Huge pile of it. Twisting metal. This is where all the scrap comes to die. Adam's tanker there. Need to do something with that really. We're going to tidy all this up though so that we can stack straw on it in the summer. Old road sweeper. Old go-kart made out of Subaru. This is the field of wheat we patched up. It's not doing very well. It was obviously too dry, then it was too wet, and it's, the other stuff looks great, apart from the heavens. But that bit in the middle there where it's flooded, it's just not growing. I thought we might have had some straw, but it's not gonna catch up. But we'll, we'll see come harvest. I might be telling you something different then. So pheasants run out 13 kilometers an hour. A little bit quicker. 16.9, 17, a bit quicker now, is it going to fly? We're gaining on it, 22 and a half mile an hour, oh and it's flown. For something with legs that long, 22 and a half kilometers an hour is a pretty quick run I'd say. Better watch you don't hit that manhole with the boom. Just lift up a bit, back on auto again. 
So who else is spraying today? It's the most people spraying today because it's the perfect day. It's so still and it's overcast, so we're not going to get any scorch from the sun. So believe it or not, you can actually scorch corn with just water because as it lands on the plant, it's like a sphere. It can magnify the sun's rays and scorch the plants. Or is it just me daft enough to be working? Let me know in the comments. This is a field of wheat that we kept that wasn't too bad. And then this one, we had some bad seed. So we obviously decided to get rid of it. And it's now potatoes. And they're all up in the little rows. You see them. So these were sown six weeks ago now. So 18th of April. They're good. So they'll probably be harvested, I don't know, end of July, August of the time. Hopefully get them out and we can get wheat straight back in. Quick bungalow garden update. That pump's working, all flowing, fountain. Put fish in there now, now it's got some aeration. This is the old, what we call, well it was the wash house for the old farmhouse that used to stand here. But we also used to store, it used to be the chemical store before they changed all the regs. Hence the warning triangle on the door. After stripping it down, find out why it wouldn't start. No one told me, neither key. My sister bought my nephew a quad for his birthday last weekend. I mean, the minge bag that she is, she decided to get one without an electric start. Anyway, he used it last weekend and then today no one could start it. So loads of people I look at, I went over, wouldn't start, little pull start on it. So took the spark plug out, no spark, chased the wire and found an ignition switch and did not put a key in it. So obviously with the ignition off, it was never going to start. Got the ignition key, turned the key on and it started. So that's just wasted 20 minutes of me filling up my sprayer. If you're going to buy your kids a little quad, make sure you get one with electric start. Otherwise, when they stall it at the far end of the field, you don't have to run over and start it for them as well. They might be £100 more, but trust me, it's worth it. Chris has loaded up Nick's digger and his low loader. Take it up to Carlisle to his other farm for him. Adam's cleaning the tracks on the digger because it's going to James's and he's doing his septic tank. And James has OCD, so he doesn't want soil on his driveway. I know I mentioned it yesterday. But it still amazes me that Richard Weston can fit one of them in a container. When you look at that container there, I know that's a 20 foot one, they were putting them in 40 foot ones. But for the size of that trailer to go in one, it's pretty clever. So like I say, check it out on their Instagram yesterday. Loads of people have been saying about the row width on the drill being 25 centimetres. Surely we're so, so in less stuff. Well, we are, but then we're not. We're still putting the same weight of seed down, but the rows are condenser. Anyway, this is something by mistake. Not so at 60 centimetre row spacing before we realised. Fortunately, I don't know whether we'll be able to map it with the combine because we've not done enough. I think it's less than the width of the combine, but it looks great. And if we lose some different herbicides in future, at least we can go down with a hoe and into row it. And then there's, there's no weed within the row because the plant spacing is so dense. So it'd be interesting to see at harvest what it looks like. Quick brickwork update. They're all a little bit different, so the lines are a little bit wobbly, but I think that gives it character because the other building's always, the older building that was here before it, never had any straight lines in it anyway. It's taking shape now, just obviously a bit more to do with the two gable ends, then go up another bit. We'll have to put scaffolding on then to go higher. Got more bricks here now, ready to go. On the pallet there, and some more just to try and tidy up and keep going. Some odd fly tips and rubbish, it's just like garden waste. Luckily, we've got the capabilities to move it and recycle it. Take it back to the yard. I think that was someone that went to the tip, realised it's a queue, and thought, oh, sod it, and just threw it out in the gateway on the way back. Anyway, I brought it back in, two nice uh, dumpy bags that we can use for putting soil in, and we can put that through the chipper as well, turn it into biomass. So, could have been the worst bit of tight fly tipping. This was yesterday's quiz question here. It is a log splitter. That is a ram off a flexi coil set of six metre rollers. That was a gate post that we removed off a council job years ago because we did graffiti on it. We had to cut it off to get a set of uh, rollers, I think, into a, into a field or a, or a mower. That is a bit of a bucket edge, off cut off a bucket edge, probably a spalding as well. This is a spade off an immense spading machine, which is what we used to use for drilling. We used to have them with Accord drills on the top. That's a valve block, which I think I bought just to do the job because it, was, um, it wasn't that dear. And I used to have a bungee cord wrapped around this pulley area there. So as the ram went that way, it pulled on the lever, and then as soon as you let go of the lever, 
the bungee cord retracted the ramp so it was like a single-handed operation then that frame i believe is off an almond crop sprayer so there's, there's two sides to it and that's just a bit of racking to give it a bit of strength so it's totally made pretty much of scrap i think the only thing i bought was that valve block so loads of people got it right but no one got it completely right of where it all came from amazingly someone did guess that it was a sprayer frame but they never got the rest of it right so no one wins the 100 pound today dead easy quiz questions for today does anyone know what they're off set of brackets a closer look they're going on the grab round there do you know what machine they fit if you think no leave a comment below they're going to be going on the grab that um i've sold that we didn't the squeezer thing that i've not been using totally forgot but someone was asking where this came from well it came with the milwaukee grease guns um so adam's got a milwaukee grease gun and so is nick it's for getting them like hard to reach nipples where you can't get straight onto them and a the flexi just keeps flying off. You can push this on and uh, get the grease into it really easy. That's about it for today. Mostly been spraying fungicide and a little bit of herbicide mixed in. Baby Merlot looking really shiny after Christine cleaned it the other day. Looks great, doesn't it? Don't forget you can watch another video by clicking here or subscribe by clicking here or the other way around. I haven't quite worked that out yet. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Don't forget if you're not subscribed, click subscribe. Also, you can hit that little bell icon, and every time I post a video, it tells you as well. So you don't have to like keep checking YouTube whether I've put it on yet as well. And here's an outro from Farming Life Hillbrooks, who actually have a baby Merlot as well. Well, I don't know if it's a baby one, but they call it a baby Merlot, and I think they've got a YouTube channel. So check it out. Uh, so thanks for this, and I'll see you tomorrow.